What's going on YouTube? Welcome to another live oil painting session. This one is going to be questions and answers. So remember near the end of a painting study, I'm typically going to do a questions and answers style video. Uh, that is because we are in the very subtle stuff of the painting. This is a Rembrandt master study. This is, I think, maybe the fourth stream on this one. Uh, so I'm going to take the face, at least this part of the face, as far as I possibly can today. Uh, but what I want is for you to ask me any art-related questions that you have. Remember that this part of the painting takes a lot of time, and not a lot of stuff happens in a lot of time. You'll notice that I'm using my handheld palette. I'm not using the palette set up uh, that you're used to on the side. Don't worry, we'll bring back the side palette when we start the next project but i want you to see how i actually paint how i move around i'll probably bump into this camera that's right next to me once in a while but you are actually very close to front and center you're at an angle but you're pretty close to front and center so you have a little bit of a different view here uh hey stephanie janice kathy what's up good to see you again it's been a long time huh all right, so we're going to oil out the painting, and I'm going to oil out pretty much just the face. It's a little bit dramatic when I do this, isn't it? I should have chosen this to be the thumbnail. If I was smart at um, marketing, I would have chose that to be the thumbnail. But anyway, you can, you can see as it starts to drip how it brings back the luminosity that the painting had when it was wet. So that is half solvent, half cold press linseed oil. The solvent that I use is Spike Lavender Oil. So now you can see the luminosity is back. Uh, it had sunk in for some time. I don't know if I oiled it out last time. I don't think so. I'm not going to get into all the specifics of the, the um, clothing that she's wearing and all that stuff. Um, I'm more focused on the face. I'm trying to get the face as possible, as close as possible to um, a Rembrandt-like finish as I can, because that's where all the learning happens. Uh, the learning happens with this, the difficult stuff in the face. So this is just an artist sponge, and I use the dripper. A little bit of dust accumulated on there, but nothing that we cannot work with. A lot of subtlety is going to happen and subtlety involves a lot of things that will not help me out very much if I do like a million YouTube videos on it um, like I have tried in the past. So questions and answers style. Anything, any questions that you have about me, about my painting, uh, whatever is on your mind, please feel free to ask. As you see, um, this might be the first time that you actually see me from this camera angle. Um, you can see the entirety of the YouTube setup and how awkward it is to be maneuvering around the camera that's like right next to me. So I'm mixing on my palette and I, I try my best to clean it, but as you can see there, it's still got paint on it from... Uh, when I was working earlier, earlier today I was working on um, the blue dress, uh, I guess you can see it, this blue dress big painting that I've been working on for a year now, about to be a year. And what's more, you're going to be able to see super close. So if you thought that that wasn't close enough, you're going to have this camera view. Now I know it's a little bit, a little bit blurry because I used um, my streaming software to achieve that. But now you're going to get to see really close up. It should be streaming at 720 uh, high definition. Hope everyone's staying as safe as they can. 
in this hurricane. So I'm using blue and I'm using green from my palette. I guess it's a little hard to read the text on the close-up view. But we'll just stick with this one for now. Hey, Megalo Mart. First time I've seen your name there. Welcome to the live stream. Hey, Tommy. Thanks for watching from Finland. Oh, thank you. You're too kind. You're too kind. This week, I haven't been streaming as much. I met with, um, every two weeks, I meet with my pool instructor, uh, billiards instructor. So that took up a uh, majority of my time. How do you mix a dark skin tone? Do you use black? Um, a dark skin tone? I'm trying to think of what, well, I don't differentiate between different skin complexions. I look for uh, shapes of color relative to one another, and I treat each painting the same way, essentially. But for darker colors, I tend to, it's kind of difficult to pinpoint, but on my palette, if you look at my palette, it's a square palette, and it's actually set up, I didn't do this on purpose, but I guess it kind of makes sense. Yellow, purple, orange, blue, red, green. So the um, complementary colors are right across from each other. So I go between the complementary colors to make um, darker skin tones and then to, I guess, lighten the value relative to another value i'll use uh white to lighten it or i'll use yellow if i want to make it green or warm and make a little the difference in hue really makes it so lively oh thanks i'm trying i'm trying my camera depending on where you're looking at is making this look really red and it is more red than this but it's not like red red it's like a orange so the camera does make it look a little different, so I can't take all the credit for that. I'm glad that that ended up working out. So I'm using a sable brush, and with the close-up, pay attention, pay attention everyone, at the control. And this is not, uh, this is a pretty beat up brush. You can see the uh, point right there. It's fairly beat up, but it is a um, cat's tongue. It's not made from cat's tongues, but it is a cat's tongue pure red sable. Cat's tongue shaped pure red sable silver brush brand. This is my favorite brush for control. And with this one, I try not to drag the brush, but lightly tap across so I don't eat up the brush. Not literally, but on the texture. Now, for this subtlety stuff, it, it really is up to you how you want to approach it. But I'm approaching it through pushing the form, pushing the darks as much as I can. I know there isn't a reference here because at this point the reference is not going to be that useful for you. Because the reference is just going to be too different from this point on. Uh, in the sense that you're looking at a painting and not a photograph of um, a painting and especially because of the angle that this is in I'm pushing the form as much as I can and what one of my teachers would always say is don't sacrifice the painting for the likeness so um, likeness is important I try to get likeness as much as I can right i want it to look like the person but in the end of the day the painting is so much more a portrait painting is so much more than a likeness if likeness was all that we were after we would all be photographers but well some of us are photographers um, but the important thing is 
finding that something else, that something extra, that is uh, only described in, in paint. See how carefully drag this across. The good quality linen, uh, it's a linen that is stretched over a wooden panel. And this is, um, I'll show you again. I bought a bunch of these. Uh, this is a Centurion LX Universal Primed Linen Painting Panel. So you can look that up on uh, Jerry's Artorama or wherever you like to purchase. They're really, really nice. You can tell the texture is not, it's not too bad. They told me you hope that someday you'll get 120 uh, for water-based oil paints, canvas brushes, live training with me. Well, uh, let me see, what, what number is that? Well, my online classes start out at $10 a month. You're able to uh, watch all of the lessons. There's well over 100 lessons there at your own time. But the best thing for me to suggest for you, if you want to start off with uh, water mixable oil paints, which is totally fine. I'm teaching in-person classes, and uh, two of the oil painters there are using water mixable oil paints. It, it has become such a such a popular thing. Um, all you really need to get started with portraiture is the Zorn palette. The Zorn palette um, that is your titanium white your yellow ochre, your cadmium red, and black. All you need are those colors. The most expensive color there is going to be your cadmium red. Cadmium red is really important. Mine is a little sloppy because I mixed it. There it is right there. Look how bright that is. It's a little sloppy um, right there. It's a little sloppy because I, um, I'm not putting it in a tube when I uh, make my paint and keeping it in a little plastic container and it just kind of falls apart over time there All you need is water mixable if you don't have the money for these brushes uh, These are pretty expensive brushes, but they last a long time. Uh, I will say that they last a long time uh, You can use any brushes you want really in the past I kind of used whatever The Zorn palette. Hey Eunice, live stream is growing. All right, it is growing in popularity. You mean the format of live streaming? I have no way of telling how many are watching here, but if we've got more than a couple of people watching, definitely feel free to ask. Anything you want uh, that we can actually talk about on YouTube, of course. Any art-related questions, if you're wondering what my favorite pizza is, that's okay, too. Um, any questions you, you can think of. Oof, and for those very complicated colors, I wish I could tell you what I'm using, but I'm, use, I'm mixing right into my little pile. I'm mixing right into my little mess, and I'm figuring out what to do there. Oh, thanks, Eunice. I, I didn't know. I've, I don't have access to my numbers because I'm looking dead at the chat. So before I used to like go like this to see the chat, but now I can actually see the chat on a TV. Is cadmium red the same as cadmium red deep? Good question, and I don't think so. I have cadmium red deep from Old Holland. That's what I used to use like all the time. That was my go-to red. And then I found out that um, cadmium red medium, especially from, um, well, I have it right here, from uh, Gamblin, this is the powder, I, the powder pigment, I mix it with uh, linseed oil. I, I don't recommend anyone do this, but uh, just go to Gamblin and buy their cadmium red medium already in the tube. 
Because, um, I mean, if you mix it on your own, it's a little bit dangerous, and then this can happen. It's a little sloppy. Um, the Cadmium Red Medium from Gamblin is my favorite red by far, and I've used, I've used a lot of red. It's not as blue as uh, Cadmium Red Deep is, so that's, that's the answer to your question. It's not as blue as Cadmium Red Deep. Hey Christine, what colors am I mixing together right now? Good question. Uh, I wish I could tell you. I go right into my, I'm telling you, what you see on YouTube with that palette on the side, that is not really how I paint. Uh, it is in the sense that I am mixing the same colors, uh, but there's something different about how I actually work. And you can see me like moving around, trying not to bump into my camera. So I've got some kind of gray in my palette and I ask myself, do I want this gray to be uh, towards the red, towards the blue, towards the yellow? I'm thinking constantly of hues. Um, so possibly what happened was I got a gray from I got a gray from mixing ultramarine blue and orange and white. I grayed it out, and then I added probably orange to it. And then on top of that orange, I added a little bit of alizarin and viridian complicated stuff to try to actually verbalize but to get colors like that uh, with a palette that's primarily the primaries and secondaries which it, this is what it is so you have cadmium yellow cadmium red cobalt blue in this case my cobalt blue is missing because i ran out of it uh, so ultramarine blue is my blue there but basically red orange yellow green blue and violet are the colors on my palette oh thank you so much stephanie thompson thank you thank you so much thank you thank you so much uh for the uh the super chat uh for, for my favorite pizza thank you so much no one asked me what my favorite pizza is honestly i think it's the buffalo chicken uh pizza from uh, Papa John's. I think that's my favorite. I'm not sponsored by a pizza company, so I can just tell you. So I would like to mix orange and blue a lot for these colors. And thank, thank you so much, Stephanie Thompson, for the super chat. Now these are very delicate little forms. I couldn't tell you how delicate they are. They're so delicate. Um, hey, John. Hello there. So I've made the chat even bigger on the on the screen, so you can see. And let's get you again in a close up, so you can see just just how subtle. Look at that. Just how subtle this is. I mean, it is so, so subtle. And I'm looking at a printout of the Rembrandt, so it's a little difficult for me to see uh, because the printout isn't quite as vivid uh, as I wish it was. So I'm looking at form. I'm constantly thinking about form. And I'm asking myself, is, the person's, is a person's face really going to be this sharp on the edge? It's possible, but not likely that it's going to be that sharp. And I usually go and I make a form sharper before I go and make it more smooth. So we're going to make it more smooth. Check out the control of the sable brush. So when it gets to orange, I go with blue. Believe it or not, I'll go with phthalo blue and cadmium scarlet which is uh, one of my orange colors. So I'm trying something very different uh, to what you've seen me do in the past. In the past, I was very safe. I was using earth colors like yellow ochre and burnt sienna um, and some other earth colors too, like orange ochre and transparent mummy. Uh, but now, I'm really trying to get color in its essence. Just the primaries and the secondaries. I'll tell you what though. Uh, 
two very important colors on here that are not necessarily your regular everyday colors are dioxazine purple and thalo turquoise those are not very regular everyday colors on your palette viridian shore ultramarine shore alizarin shore uh cadmium yellow shore indian yellow shore maybe not as much indian yellow but the dioxazine purple and the uh the thalo turquoise i'm telling you i was afraid of thalo turquoise for the longest time i was scared of it i was scared that it would go and it would pollute and i think i would say that too in my youtube videos that it was a dangerous color to use and i've just used it right there in that little spot i've used the touch of it so i've said it before and i'll say it again this is a constant learning process this is we're always learning and sometimes what we thought before was the best way to achieve something can always be challenged and we can always learn and i'm going on and on and on and on i want you to have a chance to ask any questions you have Now, if no one asks any questions in a little bit, I'm going to ask you a question. And as I'm doing that, I also want to describe, uh, talk a little bit about the class that I'm teaching in person in, um, in Maryland, in Glen Echo, Maryland. Um, I'm teaching a in-person introductory to drawing and painting class. So I'm painting... If you notice with my YouTube channel, I'm uploading an extra video on um, on Sundays. And um, in that video, I'm actually going to move you down a little bit. Hold on a second. Too far. I need a camera crew. There we go. Now we're going to be working down here. So in that video, you'll see that I do a painting in 30 minutes. Um, it'll probably take me a little longer uh, this coming Sunday. I do a painting in my normal speed, a little bit medium to fast, slow for some people. Uh, but at my own speed, I'll, uh, I'll demonstrate it. I'm actually recreating that same painting during the class that I'm teaching in person. So it's very unique. Um, I've never really uh, taught a class like that. I've never been in a class like that where the instructor recreates the painting, uh, does it twice. Um, and I expect the students to take a longer time than I do when I'm demonstrating in class for them. So I'll, I'll paint for like, what, like five minutes? I'll paint for like um eight minutes that's an exaggeration i'll probably paint for about honestly probably like five minutes and then um and then i stop and then i let the students paint from my painting in in person of all of this is in person and um let them follow along with what i've painted and then i have little checkpoints so i'll stop and I'll say this is a checkpoint. So now I'm going to go around and check everyone's contours, or I'm going to go around, I'm going to check everyone's noses, uh, not their noses, but uh, in their paintings. Very unique. I don't know how I came across that. I just kind of made it up. And uh, I like teaching like that. Hey, Kathy, am I selling any paintings? If so, where? Oh, are you so, so kind? Oh, you're, you're teaching me that I'm terrible at marketing myself, which I am very bad at marketing myself. Uh, at the moment, no, I'm not selling any paintings. Um, I might have one for sale on Etsy, but I think it expired. Um, they can only be on there for a certain amount of time and then they expire. Uh, no, at the moment I don't have anything for sale. I'm more kind of producing than I am selling. Um, 
kind of like a singer that's spending more time writing and uh, recording than they are going on concerts. So no, I don't have anything for sale. Don't tell my wife though. <laughs> she wants she wants me to have things for sale. I'm I'm really like uh definitely check out my Instagram everyone if you haven't seen it recently. I've really been uh putting a lot of hours in the studio. I've produced one figure painting that I think is my best narrative painting that I've ever done. A combination of painting from life, painting from imagination. I, I completely made up a person in that painting and uh, from reference, of course, I took pictures of lizards. I mean, pictures of lizards from the internet uh, and used that. So, um, and now I'm working on that blue dress painting behind me. So I'm in like production mode. Well, thanks for the question though. I should be better at that, I really should. See how I'm patching these edges together. You never really get to see stuff like that uh, on a live stream of mine. I like to work in little puzzle pieces for these forms so that the forms don't appear too vaporous, uh, too vague. The pink flower, is is it still available? Do I even... I better check it. Uh... Yep. It's still good. No damage on it. Sometimes, unfortunately, these paintings get damaged and I have to take them off Etsy. Uh, oh, still good. So I do have a painting available for sale. I didn't know that. Uh, thanks, Kathy. Honestly, I haven't really looked at my Etsy for a long time. I get notifications from it, though, in case it sells. Uh, let's see. It told me... Ha let's see. So you have a secret warehouse of your paintings. Uh, what you sell large... Well, I mean... Uh, I don't have a secret warehouse of my paintings. They're just kind of like, as you can see, uh, some of them I've flipped over because they were fig they are figure paintings, but they're kind of just like stacked uh, on each other. Some I've unrolled. Um, I don't worry about the typo. Tell me, do I sell uh, larger paintings? So the last larger painting that I sold, um, uh, someone is making. A, uh, someone's making payments on it is uh, going to be shipped out soon but this one is a 1620 it's a little blurry because I don't want to adjust my autofocus but that one is a 1620 I'm waiting for the varnish to be like a hundred percent and it looks like the varnish is pretty much a hundred percent but that one sold to Augustine this one is going to be in a show um, at that school. I know you're looking at a glare, but that's going to be um, at a show. That was painted in 2020. I wanted to put a bigger one, uh, uh, but 1620 is the biggest that I've sold. But um, yeah, 1620, I think, is the biggest I can fit in a box and send it to the UPS. At the moment, I'm not selling any of my uh, story paintings. 
the narrative paintings that you're seeing on Instagram. I've only sold one, and that sold uh, that went to Hollywood. Um, what is the best way to start paintings on panels? You can actually just pancake them, just lay them flat, uh, and put. If you want to be really safe about it, put uh, styrofoam. Uh, I don't know where I put. I put mine in the other room, but you can actually put like a thin piece of styrofoam foam paper, the little rolly foam paper. Um, no thanks for the heart, tell me. Uh, you can put the little styrofoam thing, but but honestly, you can stack them like this, uh, and they won't harm each other. As long as there's no like lateral movement to scratch the painting, nothing is going to harm it because it is on a panel. That's why I bought all the panels. All of these are going to just be, uh, all of these are going to be sandwiched on each other. Eight by ten is a perfect size to uh, sell. Also, so eventually I'll start selling these eight by tens. But not, not anytime soon. Oops. Yeah, 2022, I really haven't had a demand for uh, my paintings, so I kind of gave up trying to post a lot of paintings on Etsy. I'm not going to lie to you all, tell you the truth. I mean, I'm just like you. I get frustrated sometimes with uh, sales and things like that, so um, I just kind of thought it wasn't worth it. And then what I decided was I'm going to just focus time on live streaming for you here, um, making sure that I'm teaching the best that I possibly can uh, online, on YouTube, and now in person. And I'm putting a lot of focus, I mean a lot of focus, on improving my paintings. Um, I mean, I, I, I can see them when I close my eyes, like I can see... Uh, things that I want to do differently, things that I've done wrong. That blue dress painting behind me, I started last year. Last year. And I've returned to it, and I see so many things that I didn't see last year. But how are you liking this close-up? Is uh, this close-up bothering you? Do you want to go back to uh, this camera angle? Uh, do you want this camera angle, the bigger one, or do you want to stay close-up? Let me know what you're, what you're feeling. How do you clean your brushes? How often? Oh, thanks for the questions, Kathy. Thank you. Chat has been kind of quiet. Um, I clean my brushes. Uh, I clean sable brushes with cold water and bristle brushes with hot water. I clean first with um, odorless mineral spirits. And then I, uh, after cleaning it with odorless mineral spirits, then I put it in the water, soap and water. I like to use the master soap. It's called the master soap. Hey Stephanie, will you be creating seasonal portraits like the one you've done in the past? Ah, I actually was thinking about that. And I was testing this camera angle for that reason. So I want to uh, dress up for Halloween. I don't know what I'm going to dress up as and I'm going to paint. I think a self-portrait, um, a self-portrait as whatever that uh, costume is going to be about. Uh, yeah, I do have the idea in mind. I have to be very careful as I stand back. The leg of the camera is like right behind me. It's so easy to just bump into it and ruin my day. These cameras can really take a beating. I tell you, they are so sturdy, robust. All right, so let's see what we can do. ATY, most of my classes are too advanced for you. I wouldn't say I my classes are definitely catered to any skill level I would assume but but yes um let me continue reading before I say anything uh 
Uh, do you know where I can learn very basics like painting spheres, cylinders, etc. Black and black and white. Uh, classes where you can paint spheres. You know what? I think I got you covered because I am teaching an in-person class. The demo that I did uh, last time. So check out my uh, Sunday videos. Um, I will be doing things like spheres and, and stuff like that. However, if that's something you want me to do, because I honestly, when I go on YouTube, I'm looking up like pool videos, um, like uh, pocket billiard stuff, because um, that's like my hobby now. But if you want me to do more basics stuff, I will do that. If you think that that's something that you are interested in watching, more basics stuff, we can do that. I've got you covered. Um, my online classes start off with a uh, drawing template that you print out. And uh, the printout is supposed to be right next to your painting. So you have painting and then you have printout next to the painting. So um, it really is one of the most, I, I would say, simple beginnings for, um, for any painting, portrait painting or, or whichever. All right, so now let's go back to the eyes. No one said anything about close up or not close up, so I'm just gonna leave it like this. I'm using Daxazine purple, Lizard and Crimson. That's true, I did do color studies of. I, yep, I painted eggs and simple things like toilet paper rolls in my online classes. So, my online classes aren't just portraits, they're not just faces. In there, you'll find landscape, you'll find. Um, you'll find still life. You'll find animal paintings. Now we're going to start putting in the details for the eyes. I'll zoom you in again. And this is a, a pointier silver brush no kidding so if you think my online classes are too advanced that is a that's very good feedback um, the eyes aren't by the way looking at the same place in the Rembrandt so I'm gonna paint them not looking at the same place see that you see this eye looking a little bit that way. So, just showing you. Now you see how flat the image is that I'm looking at, so it's a bit of a challenge. Alright, so now I'm going to ask a question to everyone here. And the um, question is going to be, are you interested in me doing a live stream let's just say live stream tutorials of very basic stuff you want me to paint a sphere i'll paint a sphere you want me to paint a cone i'll paint a cone let me know if you're interested in more basic stuff like uh linear perspective are you interested in uh basic color mixing like we won't say not for example not mixing skin tone for a face but we can do a little tutorial where we'll, we'll mix certain colors to achieve skin tones and things like that when do i use black or do i not use it oh, thank you so much for all these questions kathy you're awesome i i'm not using black no um i'm using um for that dark daxazine purple lizard and crimson um, and I think that was it. 
I don't use black because it's just a neutral blue to me, and if I'm going to have a blue, I'd rather have something like uh, ultramarine blue or thalo blue. Um, so no, I don't really use it. I do use it though for uh, studies. So for example, like uh, if we're talking about basics, I'm going to be doing, I'm still going to be doing black and white for my uh, in-person class. So we're going to do uh, another black and white. For them, they'll be using raw umber and white. Though you can use black in the Zorn palette because it is part of the Zorn palette because it is a blue. So you can use it in the Zorn palette. I, in my studio work, I personally don't use it. Raise the light sensitivity a little bit. Uh, so you can see what I'm doing. Indian yellow is a really good transparent yellow to put in some really sneaky green tones. I think she has hazel eyes. So it's going to have green and some brown in it. Hey Stephanie, a live stream on turning form would be appreciated. Okay. Um, I've done something similar to that where we modeled a, a uh, we basically made up a shape and then modeled it in the online classes, but I can do something like that. Oh, DM, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the for the super chat. Thank you so much. That helps me out so much. You have no idea. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Tommy, I think it's better, or tell me, I think it's better to do master studies explaining basic uh, at the same time. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, so that, um, with an emphasis on basics. That's a plan. That's a plan. Hey Volker, thanks for watching from Germany. Uh, of course, ask me anything. You can ask me anything that's appropriate for YouTube. Um, I trust all of you know uh, what that means. No controversial stuff and all that. Anything art related? Anything about me? Do you want to know my favorite Indian dish? Do you want to know what my favorite motorcycle is? Um, my favorite sport? Feel free to ask. Why left eye is yellow and right side is natural? Uh, let me see. Yellow and right side is natural. This one appears lighter. And this one is a little darker. I don't know. I might have just made it darker for some reason. I'm not sure. Probably a mistake on my end. Um, I think I made this one too light. I think it's just a mistake on my end. Sometimes we just gotta make mistakes and roll with them, you know what I mean? Like, it didn't work out. Oh well. We can still make it look like we meant to do it. And what's really interesting with the Rembrandt is he paints uh, eyelashes as almost like skin tones going into the eye. So I'm going to try that. Well, thanks again uh, for the super chat uh, DM. Thank you so much. Let's see. Now there is yellow color on the left side. Oh, that looks, yeah. Okay, so that is a problem with my camera. So my camera picks up, I mean, I hate to blame technology, but it does pick up more of a yellow here. It's picking up more of a red here. So that's because the camera doesn't have a nice time trying to pick up these pure colors. 
Um, however, I did make the value too dark. This value is still a little too dark. So I'll be able to work into that. But good question. A little bit my error, a little bit uh, camera error. But that isn't as yellow as it looks there. So that's the downside to using these colors, uh, especially if I'm, you're going to be live streaming like this. Volker, you'd be interested in seeing a video on basic stuff. You struggle with mediums, always too too fat, so meaning too much medium. Okay, we can talk about that. Ooh, this is kind of fun. We're dragging the eyelashes across. Very odd we're using skin color for this. Yeah, color is different depending on the screen. Like my laptop, it over like my shirt is not that blue on my uh, laptop. I'm looking through my laptop. I, was, I see some dark eyelashes here. I want to clean off the brush. I do clean the brushes during the painting from time to time, and uh, I like to use this palette cup. Honestly, this is hideous to me. I'm gonna go to this uh, camera view and try not to bump. Wow, I was right there on the camera. So this palette is, this is ugly to me. This is the, and I'm sorry New Wave, but I doubt you're watching anyway. But uh, this is the New Wave Highland palette. It is absolutely hideous to me. It's just a basic uh, rectangle that's supposed to be more of a plein air palette. Uh, it's 12 by 16 inches. It's hideous to me. But this darn thing is the most comfortable handheld palette I've ever, ever had. Now, if we're talking about looks, my favorite looking palette is what I call my forever palette, which is this thing. And uh, I use it on occasion. I don't use it all the time. I liken this to say uh, a really fine automobile uh, that you always want to keep clean and you don't put that many miles on it you don't use it that much um, this is my prized possession of a palette made by a, a, an artist named larry wiseman i actually used this for months last year um, and he unfortunately is in a home with alzheimer's so he is not making palettes anymore this is a very special palette to me so i hang it up I don't really use it from day to day, but this is my regular everyday normal palette. It's hideous, but it is so comfortable. And the little hook on there's like a little hook on the top of it that goes really well with my um, my palette cup. And this palette cup is designed, uh, and you can buy these. These are the UFO looking ones. You can also get one that's got two. But I find that this is a little bit heavy. So I'd rather have the one that has just one. So this palette cup works really nicely if you clip it on uh, to your paper towel and then you can clean your brushes while you're working. And if you're mixing like I am, like in a string, you see all these mixtures here? So I mix in the string right there. There are some days I won't even clean it. There are some weeks I won't even clean it, but um, I just thought I would mention it. I'm not sponsored by anyone. I can tell you how I truly feel about such and such products. Um, definitely the New Wave Highland is the most comfortable palette and uh, the wooden one. Can you tell me, let's see, you told before about your way to start art. Where do you get your, uh, let's see, everyday inspiration and power to continue 
uh, your great work of doing and teaching art. Oh, thank you for that comment. Thank you. Um, honestly, I got my motivation. Like, I, w I went through a slum, um, if that's even the correct slang, but I went through, probably isn't, I went through a time period, like a couple weeks, I think, where um, I wasn't really doing live streams. I was not quite that interested i was a little bit stuck with my painting um and i actually took up a hobby uh, to distract me from painting and um honestly i think without having a hobby or like a side hobby of some sort like a hobby on the side of being a reptile keeper because being a reptile caretaker is my main hobby, right? Um, but I picked up uh, something called Pocket Billiards. Uh, some of you know about it. Some of you are even excellent at it. Um, but I started playing, it's called Pool. Uh, I started playing Pool. And the more I would learn about Pool, the more I appreciated the art of learning and the mastery involved in any subject, any field. Uh, I just appreciated mastery so much. So, to answer your question, I went a very, incon uh, not inconvenient, I went a very unconventional route. I stopped looking at painting, I went to play pool, I was at pool halls for hours, and then like, boom, like I was like, I want to paint now, I miss painting, I've been missing so many. <laughs> So many easy shots, like, I want to paint now, I miss painting. There we go, slump. Um, and teaching, I just, I don't know, I've always liked being able to present my knowledge to others. Like, if you know me in person, you will get bored of me talking about art all day, talking about pool all day. Like, I'll, when I'm into something, like, I am into it, and I really love presenting it. Um, I just, I don't know, I've always liked to be able to present what I'm thinking, uh, what I'm feeling, and what I've learned to others. But honestly, um, your art is, think about it, I've made this uh, analogy before, think about your art like a, uh, a relationship. Your art is like a relationship. In some relationships, I'm assuming it's not a toxic one, right? Because that's a problem. Um, but art is a healthy relationship. It's not. It's not a toxic. It's non-toxic, even though our materials are toxic. Uh, a little twist on words there. Everyone out there, believe me, if you've started painting for like a month to a year you're in the honeymoon stage for those of you that are not familiar of what the honeymoon stage is that's when you meet your partner um, whoever your partner is it's when you meet your partner and you enter a relationship you're in the honeymoon stage and then all of a sudden you're annoyed the things that you really enjoyed about them like you enjoyed I don't know, you enjoyed how they would eat. Uh, like, you enjoyed eating with them, right? Um, I'm trying to think of this analogy. Somebody, I heard this on a TED Talk, I don't remember what, but the things that you really enjoyed about them at first, you start to then notice the other side. So you notice that they chew loudly, you notice that they snore loudly, or you notice that, I don't know, just things about them. Um, so you transition from the honeymoon stage in the relationship to really starting to understand this person which is so important because you have to have patience when you're in a relationship you have to it's a it's a give and take right you have to have relationship uh, patience it's the same with painting believe me painting is the same there's gonna be a time in painting where you're going from that like honeymoon stage of like Oh, this is so awesome. I'm going and I'm painting every day to like, uh, do I really want to paint today? Uh, and then when that happens, then you're like, you're out of it for a little bit. 
And then all of a sudden, like, boom, like something clicks. And then you go right back into uh, falling in love again. That's like a relationship. You, you constantly fall in love again, time and time again. You keep falling in love. You grow together or you grow apart. Just like a relationship in, in real life. Hey, Jonas. Any newly discovered favorite artists? Um, not really, not recently for me. Uh, I can't think of any newly discovered. I can't think of any. And I probably did think of... Mm, I'm recently really enjoying Constable, John Constable's landscapes. I didn't really like landscape as much before. Another recently discovered, I mean, new to me, is um, The Peaceable Kingdom. It is a series of paintings by, I can't remember his name anymore. I think it's Edward something. Uh, a painting series called The Peaceable Kingdom, uh, where this this uh, painter is trying to portray life as it should be, animals in, in harmony, people in harmony not killing each other and things like that. Um, gosh, I don't remember his name. The, the Peaceable Kingdom. And it's not like a super real, it's, it's not like a Rembrandt kind of finish to it, um, but it's got something else to it that I really identify with. So the Peaceable Kingdom, that's that's relatively new to me. Good question, very good question. Let's see if we can do something about that. It's a little dark. So we're going orange and blue. Are there any impressionists that I like? Of course. Um, William Merritt Chase. I mean, he was Charles Hawthorne's teacher, right? Charles Hawthorne. I hope I'm remembering this right. Charles Hawthorne taught. Uh, I think he taught Henry Henchy. Um, but anyway, I know that Henry Henchy has a lineage to William Merritt Chase, and uh, he taught my teacher. So I have a lineage back down to uh, William Merritt Chase. William Merritt Chase uh, was taught by the uh, early Impressionists back in the day who were connected to, like, Monet. So my teachers can be traced all the way back to, like, Monet and the Impressionists. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I like Monet. Uh, I like his, his paintings. I've always enjoyed Monet's paintings, the looseness of it, the colors. Sometimes I'm a little critical about it, but... Generally, I do like Monet. Um, uh, yeah, William Mary Chase, Monet. Mary Cassatt's kind of an impressionist in my mind. Um, so I, I like Mary Cassatt's paintings a lot. I've done some Mary Cassatt's, um, uh, Mary Cassatt studies, I think. I might be confusing her with Cecilia Bow, but... Uh, Cecilia Bow, another one. There you go, Edward Hicks. There we go. That's that's my the guy that I was talking about. Recently discovered to me, new to me. I thought somebody was about to ask me the meaning of life. That would be a good one. <laughs> What's the meaning of life? I don't know. I'll tell you uh, once I've lived life. Now you're painting yellow away from the right side? I'm confused. Well, I didn't even touch yellow um, in here. I used orange and blue. Uh, let's see, I don't know. Ah, uh, I mean, uh, 
That's just the way it looks. But honestly, I can tell you my interpretation of the meaning of life. The left side. I mean, I think you're talking about here. Because I saw it too on my screen. Terry Mura. I gotta look this person up. Luckily, that's going to be uh, in the video right there. So there's a name to look up. Okay. Let's go and that needs some adjusting. Notice I'm not, I don't really care too much about the edges. I'm just focused on this stuff here. And that's bothering me. I don't know why that looks so orange on my screen. I can tell you what the meaning of life is to me, though. Now we're going to get real. Uh, what is the meaning of life? Well, I'll summarize it like this. And I'll tell you where it happened that I uh, had this kind of like an enlightenment in life. Um, it happened during my grandpa's funeral. And my grandpa was such an awesome guy. He, um, he... The dude literally pulled me out of a moving car when I was a child because my grandma was trying to learn how to drive because she didn't learn how to drive when she was in Peru. Um, and she left the car in, uh, in drive, I think, because it was automatic. Um, and it started moving, and he pulled me out of a moving car. The door hit his face, and he lost, like, two or three teeth pulling me out. The car went down the hill crashed into into an apartment complex he definitely my grandpa definitely saved me there um and uh he was such a great person throughout my whole life but anyway um during his funeral i i think i came upon the meaning of life uh to, in my opinion the meaning of life is this is what it is it's very simple the meaning in life is to live your life happily live your life happily such that when you die you leave something behind that will help other people find their happiness that is the meaning of life to me that is what i think the meaning of life is to me live life happily and by the time you're done leave something behind that will help others find happiness and in that happiness, there's all the good things, like not destroying the world and um, not doing things that are destructive and, you know, stuff like that. Um, well, that's it. I mean, that's the meaning of life to me, in essence. And uh, it's interesting where I figured it out. It was years ago. Um, let's see. What is the definition of infinity? Uh, uh, that's anything divided by zero. <laughs> uh, does not compute error, error. <laughs> that's what infinity is to me. It's an infinite loop in a program that makes it crash. That's what infinity is to me. Uh, Volker, what's my opinion about a limited palette? I I think limited palettes are great to learn with. Um, I had I suggested the Zorn palette for my uh, students online, and I'm also going to use a limited palette for my uh, in-person uh, students. However, I actually was not taught using a limited palette. I was taught using an extended palette. Oh, thanks, Jonas. I've always wanted to share that little insight. Because I've been living that way pretty much all my life since then. It's all about happiness and truth. And I think that's what my paintings, I hope, will reflect. My studio paintings, like the blue dress paint, uh, painting and all that. Now we're going to soften these edges. Hey, Stephanie. 
Yeah, I was very fortunate, thanks. Yeah, I was very fortunate. And I had to mix the value for that edge. That's not an easy thing to do. And I just went right into the palette and was like, oh, that looks close. Let me make it more blue. And that was it. That's what I did. And here I'll just test out this color on its own. And that is too orange. Let's move you up a little bit. So notice how I'm using my fingers. I'm resting a pinky, though you can't see it. I'm resting a pinky on the side. Tell me, let's see, let's see, happiness is an illusion. It's more like a calm state extensions let's see not to be unhappy or too happy if you always look for happiness as something what oh always looking for happiness as a way to unhappiness oh that's true too i don't think you can force happiness either i mean i'm no expert in that that field but um uh, I feel like sometimes we just have to let go and uh, let ourselves be children again. We just have to let go and just exist, just, just be. Kind of being, being in the moment kind of thing. I think once we learn to let go of the fear of what people think about us, uh, once we learn to let go of fear of what we think about ourselves, then we can really kind of breathe, uh, kind of just relax. And when you're in that relaxed state of mind, you start to discover what you're all about. Who are you without the pressure of life? Without the pressure of a mortgage, without the pressure of uh, your kids, without the pressure of, um, you know, who are you without any pressure? What do you enjoy doing? When you can find that calmness, that calm state of mind, I think that's what happiness is. When you can find that calmness. Or you can just be. That's what I think. It's kind of like in painting. I'm not thinking about what I'm doing all that much. I'm just reacting to the canvas, to the model, and I'm just, just being. I think that is about time, though, because I have to do a Zoom in about four minutes. So, we, uh, let's see, we did about an hour, ten minutes. Anyone that's in the online classes in the uh, group Zoom tier, uh, definitely sign on to Zoom, and we're going to start a new still life painting on Zoom. So, um, this is the point in the stream where I ask if there's any last-minute questions. 
And I'm basically going to jump right from this to Zoom. Oh, thanks, Jonas. And thank you all so much for the super chats, by the way. Thank you so much. And next time we will start another one. And uh, this one, somewhere along the line in the future, I'll post it on Instagram. Happiness is a warm puppy. There we go. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, yes, I believe that, Jonas. Once you become fearless, life becomes limitless. Oh, thanks, Stephanie. All right, so those of you that are in the Zoom tiers in the online class, we are going to switch right from this uh, to Zoom. So I'm just going to lift this, put another canvas there, and we're going to start our uh, new, our new uh, Zoom painting. For those of you that are interested in uh, taking your online art education with me, uh, please check out the link to my online classes on patreon.com slash upari artist. Here is a sample of uh, some of the student artworks that have been produced in my online classes. I'm very, very proud of my students and I hope that they are very proud of their achievements as well again thank you all so much for all of your support on my uh, youtube channel i was about to switch to patreon mode thank you all for so all of your support i'm tired on my youtube channel also those of you that are patrons on my patreon i get them confused sometimes so forgive me for that anyway thank you so much for the super chats thank you so much for watching for commenting and for sharing the video remember that the live stream schedule is set between tuesday and friday not every single day i cannot promise i'll make every single day but somewhere along the time frame of 2 30 to 3 30 p.m eastern daylight time between uh, Tuesday and Friday is when you're most likely to catch me streaming here live. I try to do at least once a week. And now I'm also uploading videos, supplemental videos for my uh, in-person students on uh, Sundays. Again, thank you all so much. I wish you the very best in all of your work. And I will see you on the next one.